All right. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Got it. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Girl, you are so basic. I know, but you know what's not basic? What's that? This dining table base, and we're gonna show you how to build it. We are at our sister's house in Houston, Texas. And we are in the middle of Shaney House Crash 3.0. That's right, the third time we've crashed our house. But today we're gonna show you exactly how to build this farmhouse table, and Ashley, tell them the cost. $129. Woo, woo! Get it, girl? That is not basic. Okay, not basic at all. We're in a huge time crunch here, so we already built the first base for this table back in Dallas, and we're gonna show you how to build the second one. Let's do it. Move it out of the way. So the wood we're using for this dining table is all framing lumber. The majority of it is two by six boards that we've ripped to five inches, and we also have two by four boards that we've ripped to three inches, correct? Actually, I wanted them to be three and a half inches, mm -hmm. so I used two by six boards and ripped those to three and a half inches, but you can use two by fours and rip them to three. I just okay. wanted chunkier bases. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so so we're gonna start with the bottom of the base and that's just two of these boards that we're gonna sandwich on top of each other just to give a chunky look. And the bottom one is cut square. The top one has a little miter cut on the top half just to make it look pretty. 30 degrees? I don't remember. It'll be on the plans. Okay. So we're gonna use wood glue for this. A big glob of it, correct? Yes, big glob. And then we're going to actually turn it upside down and attach it with two and a half inch wood screws from the bottom and into the base. I'm gonna let Whitney do it. Get some shiny cam action. That's right, and I wanna make sure it stays where it's supposed to stay. Do a little shiny clamp. There we go. One thing about working out of your out of our studio, we don't have all of our extra I know. clamps. All, and stuff. all our tings. All of our tings. <laughs> You're so basic. <laughs> all right, here is the miter that we were talking about. It's just on the top half of that board, so when you turn it over, it looks really pretty. It doesn't rounded. look like framing lumber, people. Booyah. All right, so we've got these sandwiched together, and now we are doing what? It's your table, girl. Some more tings. Okay. Oh. Now it's time to attach the legs that go like this. These are cut at 15 degree angles, just like that. It makes kind of like an A. Why not a W? Because <laughs> I built it and it's my table and an A is a lot easier than a W. These are both the exact same boards. It's uh, two by fours that we have ripped the edges off of and we cut a 15 degree angle at the top and bottom. They are parallel with each other and we are going to sandwich these together with wood glue and nails. Now, we are gonna be exposing some of the screws on this, so we're gonna go back before we stain the table and fill those with wood filler. Yep. So, just note. Do y'all like our workbench right here? Just curious. Hey, Jeffrey, thanks for getting us a workbench to work on. <laughs> really appreciate that, Jeffrey. <laughs> can always count on Jeffrey for a few things. A few things. <laughs> okay, one leg down. We're gonna attach it in just a little bit, but that's what it's gonna look like. That's why we have it at a 15 degree angle, so it makes like a really pretty A. What does it make, Ashley? A really pretty A. Okay. It actually doesn't make an A at all. <laughs> at all. <laughs> all right, we got the first leg done. Now we're gonna do the second one. On it. All right, same thing, sandwiching it. And if you go to, if you click the link in the description box below, It'll take you to our website to get the free printable plans. <laughs> It'll take you to our website to get the free printable plans. And I've got some more detailed pictures about how I got the exact measurements for all of these cuts on the base because it's a little tricky. Tricky, Sorry, tricky, was tricky. Was I a little tricky. loud there? <laughs> a little loud. All right, now both of our legs are done. We have to attach them to the base, the bottom of the base. And we are going to mark center of these two by fives, which would be two and a half inches per my mathematical calculation. <laughs> and then we're gonna go two and three eighths of an inch in, and that's gonna be center. Are Sorry. you doing two and three eighths from the edge of the miter? Yes, from okay. the edge of the miter. Okay. And then I also am gonna go and center, make mark for center on here. And these are three and a half inches wide, so what is that, 1.75? I'm not answering because I don't know the answer. <laughs> I think it is. Nailed it! Woo 
Wow. Okay, so I'm marking 1.75 on the first leg, and you're going to want a scrap one by board. I just used what I was going to use for the foot pads, and we're going to lay it. We're going to lay the leg on that and put some wood glue on the bottom. Line it up with our mark. I'll be your shanty clamp once you get it. Okay, we're good there. So we are attaching this part using three and a half inch back screws through the base and into the leg. All I'm just going to be a shanty base. clamp right now. It's always nice to have one of those laying around. Laying around. Yep. That's all you do. Mm -hmm. All right, I've got this one attached and now we're going to be attaching our top. And the top is a two by six board. This is one that we ripped to five inches. All right, so I'm marking 13 and 1 8 from the edge because that's going to be where we're going to line up those top pieces. And then we need to mark center of that? Yes, Ashley, we do, actually. I know you're going to. I was I... right on that, two and a half inches, and I've got exactly where I need to line that up. Okay, so we have marked both of our marks, and we're going to flip this around. So we're going to line it up. And then I will do the attaching. I will do the honors. We're using two and a half inch. Actually, I'm going to go big or go home. I'm going to use three inch screws, Ashley. Do it. All right. And we're going through the top and into the legs. So we have our base done. We have our legs going up and now we have our top. What's next? Next, we're gonna do all the angle pieces and we're gonna start with the longest angle. This is gonna be tricky because to save time, I went ahead and tried to cut them the same as I cut the original base that I built. What's or, the key though? What would you tell people is the key to getting these awkward angles, especially when you're building with framing lumber that's not always totally square? It's not gonna always be square and then you might be off a tiny bit from what our plans say on the measurements. Um, so the best thing to do is to measure and cut as you go. So we would hold up a board where we want, we'd mark where we want them to hit, hold the board up, make a mark with your pencil, take it over to the miter saw and make that angle cut. And when you're doing that angle cut, it's always best to go like maybe a quarter of an inch longer and that way you can make sure the angle's exactly right, then you can get it exactly on the line and make the cut final. So you know that we said we make it a little bit longer, that's exactly what I did here. When I went and cut this mark, cut this angle, I made it about a half an inch too long so that I could shore it up when we got here and actually built the base. I know where I want this board to hit on this base leg and I'm gonna get my pencil and make a mark where I wanna make that cut. And now I'm gonna take it over to the miter saw, line my miter saw up with that and make the cut. On the money. Okay. Oh baby. Oh baby. It's always nice when it works. Yeah. So this is a perfect fit. We are not attaching anything to the base yet, what we're going to do is get all of our pieces fit together and then we're going to attach them, pull them out and attach them together and then put them back inside the base. At this point I would measure and cut as I go and I'm going to measure and cut for this piece right here. This piece right here I'm going to use pocket holes to attach to this long diagonal piece. So I've already made my two cuts and I have to drill pocket holes into one of these pieces. So I've got my Craig jig set to one and a half inches, that's the thickness of our wood, and I've got my bit set in place. See, there's an angle right there and you're gonna drill the pocket holes on that side of the angle and it just goes in there just like that. And you see, they're ready to go. So pocket holes are drilled now and we are going to sandwich them on top of each other with wood glue and two inch brad nails. So I cut these a little bit off also, just so I could sure them up when I got here. All right. All right, now I'm gonna take it over to the saw and make my cut more exact. Okay, that's a perfect fit. Who did this? Oh, I, wait. Think, I think Ashley. Now, I already did this one at home to spare you guys from watching the exact same thing again. So I've got my pocket holes drilled. I gotta make sure this is a good fit though. All right, that is a great fit. So now it's time to actually attach all the pieces together. So. I'm gonna use my pencil and mark where these are so that I put them in the exact same spot when I build it. This is a really creative way to, 
to design this table, Ashley. Well, thank you. Work smarter, not harder. There you go. It only took me like four times to figure out how to do it. This is going to be called our trial and error table. <laughs> DIY trial and error. With Modern Mark. farmhouse trial and error table. Okay, so take the pieces out. All right. Let's and move that. And I will do the honors. Let's move this. I feel like so I'm that, watching. So that our friends can see. Look at our friends. Hey, friends. Okay, so y'all can see right here where Ashley marked where this one goes. And so I've got my pocket holes ready to go. I'm going to add some glue right there. And then this will be an awkward angle, but that's exactly what it's supposed to be. And we are lining it up and attaching with two and a half inch pocket hole screws. Okay. All right, now we've got that one done and we're going to attach the second one. Let me, let me uh, insert your pocket hole screws for you, Ashley. Got it. Okay. All right, we have the X part done. X marks the spot. The spot. We might need a mallet for this. We'll see. Moment of truth. Watch it not fit. Oh, oh that's okay. baby. That's okay. We want it to be tight. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. After we malleted it in place, it is such a perfect fit. And now we're going to use wood screws to attach the X to the base. Okay, Whitney is using Hi, wood guys. screw. Yes, I am. I'm using the screw just like, just that. like that. Just like that. Nailed it. All right, so I'm gonna come at Here, this. Here, I can get out of your way. A little less, Ashley. Okay. Going in at an angle, and we will fill that. All right, so we have the screws in the top, and now we're gonna flip it upside down, and we're gonna use three and a half inch wood screws from the bottom of the base and into these bottom X's. All right, so we've got that attached. All right, and while it's upside down, let's go ahead and attach the foot pads. I've already cut those down to size, and they are just one by fours that we've cut to five inches wide. So now we've got to attach these top corner pieces, and these are the exact same cut. And we're gonna attach them with wood screws from the bottom part at a diagonal into this base, and then we're gonna do the same thing with wood screws from right here into the diagonal. That's done. Now we need to get the runners and attach the runners so that we can attach the bases together. All right, so to attach these runners, we're actually going to turn these base assemblies upside down, and that will help us to easily access the pocket holes to go into each base. Now, the runners are also these two by six boards that we've ripped down to five inches, and we've added one and a half inch pocket holes on the end of each board. We're not using wood glue on this because if you have to get it into the house, it's a lot easier if you can take it apart. We're using two and a half inch pocket hole screws into the bases. So these are not inset, these are gonna be flush with the outside edge of the table bases. <laughs> All right, so we've got the two top runners attached. Now we're gonna add the bottom runner. This is one of those two by six boards that we've ripped to four inches, and we're gonna attach it center between the bottom, which is right now the top of these two bases. So we are also attaching these. I'm gonna hold it for you, Ash, right. and then we'll switch it. And I'm gonna be a shanty player. Perfect. All right, awesome. And then I'm gonna come to this side right here. All right, so while Ash is getting those bases sanded for us, I'm gonna go ahead and start planking this tabletop. Now, if you've planked one shanty farmhouse tabletop, you've planked them all. So it's really basic. We've gone and added one and a half inch pocket holes down all of our boards minus one, and we'll be attaching those together with two and a half inch pocket hole screws. We've also added two one and a half inch pocket holes to the end of each one of these, and that's going to be attaching our breadboard. So, let's go. Okay, we've got all eight boards planked and Whitney's bringing in our breadboards. And the breadboards we are gonna measure and cut to fit so that we get an exact fit. I've lost my pencil. So, found it. Marking my 
Breadboard. Wobble board. Yep. The DIY <laughs> wobble board table. DIY modern farmhouse wobble, wobble board, board table. table. All right, I've got the first um, breadboard cut to fit, and now I'm going to be attaching with two and a half inch pocket hole screws. I'm going to do the same on the other end. Teamwork makes the dream work. Okay, now we're going to flip this over and we're going to get everything stained and attach everything inside the house. That's a beast. It's a beast. Woo! Woo! Look how perfect this table looks in their new dining room. I love that they can fit their entire family around it for a meal with room to spare. I love the angles on the bases and I love the color that we decided to stain this table. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss another Shaney House Crash episode. Table. You're looking for a table that doesn't look very attractive on the top. <laughs> look no further. Don't look at it. <laughs> Is cutting a rug dancing? Yeah, cut a rug. Ashley's cutting wood while I cut a rug. <laughs> Alright, so we have Brooke. Woof, woof. Save the day. I saved the day. 